Ladies and gentlemen, the co-founder and CEO of Teach for All, Miss Wendy Kopp. Good afternoon. Um, well, I know you all have been talking about innovation all day, so I'm very excited to be on your agenda since there is nothing in greater need of innovation than education, and I'm excited to share what the real key to success is. Let me start by asking you a question that Mark Zuckerberg asked me a couple of years ago. He asked me what I thought accounted for the success of Facebook. What do you think? What do you think? I can't hear anything. Great product. Oh, people, people, people. He said, some people may think it's technology, but of course it's people, it's leadership at every level of the company. And when he said that, it really resonated with me because I can't think of a single high-performing organization, team, company that isn't a product primarily of its leadership. So the same is really true in education, and yet we spend so little energy talking or thinking about leadership in education. So let's consider a few examples. The students in, in this classroom are growing up in Puente Alto, which is a low-income community in Chile, where about 15% of the kids will enter tertiary, post-secondary education. Yet the kids in this classroom, about 30 kids, accomplish something very different. Even in a year when the schools were literally closed for five months for, because of, of student protests, 76% of the kids in this classroom actually entered tertiary education, 30% of them entering Chile's top universities. Last week I was in California where this school is working with one of the highest poverty student populations in, in the state. 80% of the kids are living below the poverty line. Typically in the United States about 20% of students will take and pass an advanced placement course to get college credit. In this school, 76% of the kids do. 96% of the kids in this school are taking college, uh, a college entrance exam called the ACT and are scoring above the national average. These students in Australia are engaged in a curriculum called Maths Pathways, which uh, diagnoses their individual learning needs and, and then creates a personalized curriculum. Since Maths Pathways was created three years ago, it's reached 25,000 kids, tripling their learning rate. These kids are learning three times as much taking this uh, curriculum than, than kids using standard curriculum in Australia. And finally, the school system in this city, my nation's capital of Washington, D.C., is now the fastest improving urban school system in the history of my country. About 15 years ago, the average nine-year-old in Washington, D.C. was three or four years behind the average nine-year-old in, in our country. Today, if you met the average nine-year-old, they're at least a full year ahead of where nine-year-olds were four years ago. Now, in each of those examples, each of them is really a function of extraordinary leadership. Tomas, the teacher in the Chilean classroom, is one of the most incredible leaders I've ever met. He walked into a situation that most people would have given up on. He was only with his kids for about four months of the year, and, and yet he set a vision that other people thought was crazy. He said, my kids are going to enter university, and they're, many of them are going to get into the top universities in this country. He inspired others like great leaders do. He got his kids on an absolute mission. He got them working harder than they'd ever worked before. And then he went to whatever lengths it took, even when it meant finding a place in a chapel to pull the kids together every day that school was closed, to make sure that that happened. 
The California school got the results it did because of its school principal who was on an absolute mission to get his kids to and through college and had the leadership skills necessary to build uh, and, and mobilize a team to make it happen. Maths Pathways is getting the results that it is because of two teachers, Richard Wilson and Justin Mathis, who brought backgrounds in particle physics and engineering into the classroom and could not get over the inefficiency of today's one-size-fits-all approach and determined to do something about it by developing a different curriculum. And Washington, D.C.'s progress is a function of a constellation of leaders who are working at every level of the school system, at every level of policy, and from outside the system as well to create a different day for kids. It's really this insight that leadership is at the core of the solution that motivates all of us across the Teach for All network. I started Teach for America now about 26 years ago. And over the last several years, social entrepreneurs from countries all over the world have, have launched similar initiatives. So today, the Teach for All network is a network of 38 independent organizations and growing that are calling upon their country's most promising future leaders to channel their energy towards ensuring opportunity for all children. Across Teach for All, we are committed to tackling what we call educational inequity. The fact that really all over the world, the privilege of kids' birth, their economic circumstances, their race, their gender, and, and so forth, really predict their educational outcomes and in turn, life outcomes. This is a very complex problem. It will require a whole lot of leadership to solve it. And yet in all of our countries and really in virtually every country of the world, we send our most educated graduating college seniors, our most promising future leaders against everything but that set of issues into finance, into technology, into medicine, law, et cetera, but almost never towards expanding opportunity for the most marginalized kids. We are working to change that. The way we do this is first of all by going out and recruiting top recent grads, people of all different academic majors, all different career interests very aggressively um, to ask them to commit just two years to teach in uh, the highest need communities in, in the particular country that's recruiting them. Each year now in the United States, 40 to 50,000 graduating seniors, many of them from the top colleges in our country, compete for the opportunity to teach in our urban and rural communities. Here in the Philippines, Teach for the Philippines selects just 10% of the people who apply. Just Three years into its existence, Teach for the Philippines has attracted the valedictorians, the summa cum laude's from Ateneo University, from the University of the Philippines. In Mexico and Senapur, Mexico had 3,000 applicants last year for 120 spots. And Senya Peru had 1,500 applicants for just 60 spots. Once we've recruited these folks, we invest a lot in their pre-service training and their ongoing professional development during the two years. We do that for two really important reasons. One is the kids in their classrooms today. It's so important that these teachers have a positive impact for their kids, and rigorous studies show that they do. At the same time, those two years are completely foundational for a lifetime of leadership and advocacy on behalf of kids. Two-thirds of the folks who have committed to this actually stay full-time, long-term in education. And beyond that, many, many others who've gone into policy or law or medicine and other sectors are doing things full time that relate to either improving schools um, or improving the quality of life in, in our lowest income communities. So the ultimate goal of all this is to ensure that we build a leadership force of people who will work at every level of the education system, at every level of policy and across sectors in order to realize a day when, when all kids have the chance to attain an excellent education. This is working. The Chilean teacher, Tomas, is, is part of Enseña Chile. The school in California is, is led by a, a Teach for America alum and staffed by you know, two-thirds of the teachers are Teach for America alumni. 
Mass Pathways was the brainchild of two Teach for Australia fellows. And if you took all the Teach for America alumni out of Washington, D.C., you would take away the school's chancellors who have led the change for the last eight years. You would take the, away the vast majority of the senior team and senior leadership of the school system during that era. You would take away 20% of the school principals, many of them leading the fastest improving, the highest performing schools. You'd take away hundreds of teachers, the state commissioner for education, and the leaders of many of the NGOs um, who, are, who are supporting the change. We talk a lot about the importance of, of course, you know, and what it's going to take to meet the sustainable development goal. All kids learning in a mere 15 years all over the world. We talk a lot in our own countries about how we're going to improve our national education systems. Those conversations are typically about a few things. They're about how we need more money, we need better teacher training, we need to better leverage technology. They are almost never, ever, ever about how we're gonna build the leadership capacity we need to make sure that all those other inputs are actually gonna go to good effect. In every other sector, we spend a whole lot of energy thinking about how we're going to develop the future leaders for that sector. We have to do the same in education. I've come to actually believe that we could realize this vision. We could do it in our lifetime. Tomas in Chile is showing us what's possible in the microcosm of his classroom. We're seeing it's possible not only at a classroom level, but at a level of whole schools, across schools, in whole communities like Washington, D.C. We could realize this, but there's a big question. And the question is whether enough of our countries, our societies, most promising future leaders are gonna step up and say, you know what, we're gonna make it happen. So as I leave you today, I wanna to leave you with a question, which is what you can and, and will do to ensure that the answer to that question is yes. Thank you very much.